What's up, guys? It's Andy Flacati, and you know I love my DSLR, but sometimes you gotta take a photo on your phone. Un un unfortunately, it's very sad when I have to do it. So last week, I was heading back from the store, and this woman was taking a photo with her phone. It was raining and overcast, and I was like, what is she taking a photo of? So I'm walking down the, the street, turn around, sky was red. What? My app didn't tell me that it was gonna be an amazing sunset, so I was pretty blown away. I took a quick shot of my iPhone and posted it on Twitter, where Benjamin replied and said that I should make a video about how I make all everything consistent in my photos. So uh, Benjamin, this, this video is for you. So the major thing that makes my photos consistent is that I mainly shoot sunrise or sunset. I will say shooting the time of day will obviously make all your photos look consistent. But the second thing that I do in all my photos is use presets. So the big thing you can do is make your own presets. So the thing I like about presets is that I've said presets way too many times already. But the thing I like about presets is that you can kind of hover over them in Lightroom and get ideas for your photos. So I kind of have like a preset for sunsets. I have a preset for different things. Um, if I'm in a new environment, I'll make a new preset. So for example, if I'm out shooting fall related things and all the photos are kind of similar, I'll want to make a preset for that and then apply it to all the photos and then kind of adjust from there. So then they get a consistent look. So when I took this photo last week, I used an app called Heldy, Held. Uh, but the reason I like this app is because it allows you to take uh, raw photos. Um, a lot of apps on iOS let you take photos using raw. Even the Lightroom app lets you take raw photos. Uh, I don't really have a preference. I just use this one. Um, I think it's a couple bucks on the App Store. But the reason I like it is because it takes a normal photo, JPEG, and a raw photo. So you can see here, this is the JPEG version of the photo, and then this is the raw version. So raw, it's kind of like an unedited, unmodified uh, uh, photo. So it gives you a lot more data to work with, but it, it's going to look worse out of the gate. Uh, the reason I like to use this is because when you bring it into Lightroom, you'll have more data to work with. Obviously, these techniques will work with uh, normal JPEG photos, but uh, I like to just start with the raw photos so they're kind of more uh, consistent to edit with. Uh, and this app is great because you can just hit this button right here, share the raw file. And then I usually just airdrop it to my computer and then bring it into Lightroom CC Classic. So what I'll be showing here is Lightroom CC Classic. A lot of what I'm going to be doing is in Lightroom CC Classic. Uh, you can do this on Lightroom CC on iOS. Uh, most of the options in Lightroom are there. Uh, I just like to use this program. So if you're following along, along on your phone, you can just uh, you know use the Lightroom version on your phone and the controls are kind of in different spots. So you can see here, this is the original photo I took, um, which looks great right out of the gate. It did look like the JPEG version when I saw it in real life. It was really stunning red. Um, so you can see here on the side, I have a few presets. I have one for when I was at the beach, uh, a holiday one, which see, it looks awesome on here. A fall one, which doesn't look so awesome. But this is why it's really important to make presets is because you can swipe over everything and try a bunch of different things and get ideas of where you want the photo to go. So whenever I do sunset or sunrise, I made the sunset preset. And then I'll usually adjust from there. So like, for example, I can see the highlights are blown out. I bring that down and that's looking pretty good already. I'm gonna reset this photo and kind of edit it from scratch so you can kind of see what I do here. So usually I like to bring up the contrast, bring up the shadows a little bit, lower the highlights. Usually when you're doing like a sunrise or sunset, the highlights are really out there. So if you underexpose the photo, it's better. Uh, so bring up the whites a little bit to make that sky look a little more natural. Bring in the blacks. Maybe uh, some... Uh, the clarity, as you can see, looks cool on the ground, I think. Uh, in the sky, it looks kind of fake. Maybe I'll put it up a little bit, and then I'll in the sky, I'll remove the clarity later. Uh, Dehaze. This is probably one of my favorite tools. I put this up a little bit. It removes the haziness of photos. Uh, bump the saturation a bit. And the tone curve is probably the most important part, in my opinion, to get consistent looking photos. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with how the tone curve works, the bottom left is the darks in the photo. So see how you ri as you rise it, it turns them gray. A really popular technique now is to, to raise them. So it's kind of like that. Uh, I noticed that this kind of gives you a look where the camera, you know, if the camera wasn't able to capture the dark areas, you can kind of negate that by putting up the darks in the photo. I usually uh, raise this a bit in my photos. Uh, it's kind of weird though, because you have to click here a couple times to actually make some anchor points, and then you can actually bring it up without affecting the rest of the line. And then if you bring this area down right here, you can kind of create more contrast. Uh, we'll kind of keep it right here. But you can see it kind of re removes the detail of the bus a lot. So like in the darker areas, you want to remove the detail because if your camera has a lot of noise, it'll negate that. Uh, we can control the uh, top right here is more for the highlights. 
So if, see if I increase this, it looks kind of nice there in the uh, sky. So one of my other favorite tools is the HSL sliders. Uh, so these, you can kind of control how the colors are in your photo. But before we touch that, I'm gonna scroll down here and go to the calibration. I don't believe that this is on the iOS version, but it's one of my favorite features on the uh, desktop version. But the blue primary, shifting it left, usually creates a nice look. See if you go all the way here, it's kind of like a purple. All the way right makes it some weird purple. Okay, so I usually go left a little bit. Uh, increase the saturation a little more. Maybe modify these greens. And just remember to, to play around. I usually bump up the slider all the way to see what effect that this slider is doing. Makes it easier to kind of understand what's happening. I think I'll leave the red one alone. Let me uh, straighten this with the auto straightener in Lightroom. And I always like to remove chromatic abrasions and profile corrections. Um, I think usually when you import an iPhone photo, it doesn't really work as well as a uh, DSLR, so that doesn't really do much. Uh, increase the sharpness, I love doing that. Uh, the split toning, so the split toning, you can add colors in. So for example, if you want to add a certain color to the highlights or into the, the, the shadows. So like, for example, I can add a little green in the shadows, as you can see here, maybe a little bit. Then the highlights, maybe a little yellow in the, hi in the highlights. Kind of make it more stunning looking. So I think it is a bit red right now. So we're gonna lower some of the saturation of just the reds, as you can see right here. Oranges, let's play with this a little bit. I like the oranges, so I'm gonna keep that up a little bit. Yellows, doesn't really affect it much. Put it down a little bit. I think the blue should be desaturated a little bit. It kind of takes away the blue sky there. Yeah, it's looking good. Now, after making all these adjustments, I usually like to add a few radial filters. Uh, I think that's looking pretty good. So let's uh, add one to the middle here. And I usually, you can hold shift and hit down on the exposure and that'll actually make it darker and then hit invert. So I like to add this because you can see here, if I delete it, it kind of creates like a zoned in look on the photo. I usually do this in all my photos. And then I'm gonna add another one in the sky that removes that clarity that we added earlier. You can see it kind of makes it look more magical. Oh, that was the dehaze, but yeah, I usually like to lower the dehaze and clarity to make it look softer. Increase the exposure a little bit. Maybe I'll do another radial filter that highlights the sky and the ground where I want people to look in the photo. I think that's a little much, I'm gonna lower it a little bit. Maybe increase the shadows here so you can see more of the building and bus. Yeah, I think that's looking good. Play with the overall exposure. Maybe I'll lower it one notch. So after you have a look that you like, you can actually save the preset. And once you save the preset, I like to apply it to a few photos to actually see how it plays out. Um, so if I have a few sunset sunrise photos, I'll actually apply it to a few of them. Look how it looks. Uh, maybe it needs some tweaking on another photo. I'll tweak it a little bit, put it back on the original photo and try to make a preset that's good for multiple photos and update the preset as I go along. Uh, and then you'll have just a preset you can use anytime. So after you have that, you can just hover over and, you know, get ideas for your next photo. Uh, as you can see here, I have Christmas photos that I also shot on my iPhone. So these were all within the same day. So I actually made a preset for these after I edited them and then just applied them to them all. Uh, I think this is important if you have a scene that looks similar and then you get a consistent look. Then after that, I just export it and then airdrop it to my phone and then it's ready to post to wherever you want to post. So I hope this uh, tutorial was helpful guys and uh, yeah, have a great day. And remember to follow me on Instagram. My username is some guy and on Twitter, my username is sup, S-U-P. Please leave questions and comments below.